Hi, I'm John Cohn. I'm an IBM fellow and chief scientist for our Munich IoT headquarters. So my job is to help set the agenda for the entire headquarter building, uh, including the clients that we bring in, the experience that we give them, the demos that we show them, and to engage with them and try to figure out how do we map what they need to what we know how to do. It's really been fun. I spend half my time in Munich, and half my time in Vermont. I average about south of Iceland, I think. I think IoT is moving so fast that the most important thing is to start instrumenting your whatever it is that you make, whether it's you know wash machines, cars, uh, gadgets, industry uh, uh, processes, is start getting the data because we're, we're entering a phase where it's all about data and those devices are emitting data and we're just not using it. So start by actually getting your hands dirty start pulling the data out and looking for those insights. And then I think that after you've started to do that, I would step back and actually look at, okay, what could I do to actually transform my business? You know, what would be the most amazing thing if I could? Most of our big transformations start with that, you know, if I could. You know, it's very easy to just focus on the operational efficiency, et cetera, and that's a good place to start. But real transformation comes from saying, okay, now that I've got all this information, what can I do to transform? So it's really been interesting to me because I am a hands-on nerd. I'm a you know, first-class nerd, I like building stuff, et cetera. And what this job has really helped me you know, transform myself is I've had to become kind of a business guy because it turns out that a lot of the transformation is, you know, the technology is an enabler, but the business thought, if you look at the Ubers or Airbnbs of the world, that's, those, those big changes are not just technology. So I've had to start thinking alike. You know, for example, uh, companies like Daimler have been able to transform a car into a service, into you know, car to go. And the way that you do that is, yeah, you need to instrument the device and you need to be able to unlock and lock it. But the business model of, I want a car now and you know, just let me pick it up and run with it, that was a business innovation that is enabled by IoT. So I've started to have to think like a businessman. I would not want to tell any of my nerd friends that. IoT is kind of in its infancy, and when I think about the next couple of years, the major change is going to be about convenience and of, of being able to take devices, get the data online securely, automatically, and keep them under management. Some of that basic blocking and tackling is still very much more complicated than it needs to be. And I think com you know, companies like IBM are making it so much easier to be able to snap your devices into our platform. You know, that's a precursor for being able to do anything with the data. So I think over the next couple of years, that's going to become a whole lot easier. Technologies like blockchain, for example, which you, you know, think about IoT and blockchain in the same sentence, it really is a nice idea where you're going to be able to uh, recognize a device from the first get-go and configure everything about it and maintain it without a whole lot of uh, uh, handwork to make that happen. I think that's going to be a, a lot of improvement in the next couple of years. My personal belief is that the combination of, of uh, technologies like blockchain, which allow you to, to articulate, you know, change ownership and, and do things like payments, when that mixes with artificial intelligence, what we're going to start seeing is that devices become more autonomous. That they're, you know, we think about autonomous cars, but you're going to have autonomous appliances. And what that means is they're going to be able to negotiate with other, other entities, whether it's for electrical processes, for uh, peer devices in your house, et cetera, to set up and negotiate how they should communicate, uh, when they run, et cetera, when they change ownership. Everything would actually become sort of a ability to, to negotiate. Think about this. Imagine a freight container, okay? that is now an instrumented device. Imagine each freight container kind of looking at the information out in the world and saying, you know, weather, political situation, traffic, et cetera, and negotiating on behalf of its contents, let's say it's something perishable, what's the fastest, cheapest, most reliable way to get from point A to point B. That's all centralized right now and it's very disjoint. I believe a future where we actually have device kind of acting democratically with each other, more autonomously, and I know it's going to happen. What I love about my job is I'm on the, the cusp of two really growing technologies. So IoT is really coming to, into its own, where you've got so many things connected. But the, the, the rest of the company is actually coming on strong with artificial intelligence, with Watson, cognitive computing. And the two of those, to be able to make things that think, 
is really, really amazing because it's not just actually being able to take the data from devices, from cars, from appliances, it's from your home, and actually use technology like Watson to be able to understand what it's thinking, you know, to be able to anticipate what's going to happen, et cetera. That's one thing, but the opposite is so exciting that you can actually infuse that incredible intelligence into everything, into any little thing, into a toy, into an appliance, et cetera, and basically have the working knowledge in the entire world available in every device. So being on the cusp of those two technologies coming together and watching it grow, it's just, it's the most exciting time I've had in 40 years in this industry.